Hello, this is John Peters, and today on the Book Review, I'll be talking to Graham Slater, UK author and music publisher, and also a scriptwriter. Hello, yeah, Graham. <laughs> Hi JP, nice to be with you once more. This woman, we've covered her before, also has been a singing telegram, uh, an actress and a voiceover girl for commercial. Uh, she now lives in Missouri and it's Monica M. Brinkman. That's right, yes, yeah, she's done lots and she does a, a radio show which she uses videos and things, which I've been on a couple of times. But this book, I actually, I've got to admit, it's evening now, but I actually finished this this afternoon. I sat for several hours. I started a day or two ago, but I spent most of the day in between getting the the roast ready for the evening reading the book so it's fresh in my mind that's good i, I thoroughly enjoyed it <laughs> yeah well this is the preceding way uh, no it is not is the, it prequel. The, the prequel the yeah of the wheel's final turn which we featured in september that's correct yes this one is called the turn of the karmic will that's right and i don't know if she wrote this one first i mean looking at the date on it it could well have been written first but when we got involved was well, probably 12 months ago and she sent me the new the latest one last summer which we reviewed as you say after our interview and i sent it over to her she said well she said you know you ought to read the prequel really so that's what i've been reading well the main character is euclid a very unusual name Mm -hmm. but he is he still features very much in it and the book starts with him going off buying a gun a brand new gun he said he's going hunting and the guy in the um in the hardware store that sells guns said well you have to leave it with me for 24 hours because i've got to get clearance because he got the gun and the guy in the shop didn't really know why he wanted it uh, he was really confused you know he said what sort of gun do you want and as the book moves on i'm not going to give it away but he wants the gun for himself he's got no intention of hunting or anything else at all i, I gotta say he, he wants to shoot himself he wants to kill himself with it and that becomes clear later on in the book so that's why he wasn't particularly interested what she's done monica is she actually has talked about euclid early on and then he seems to disappear for quite a few chapters and as you highlighted in the previous this book some of the chapters are page and a half two pages long and I see why she's done that again she's done the same in this one and I can see why she's done it because she is talking about as well as Euclid four key characters who have wronged and I use that word advisedly a lot of people in their lives Uh, You have a lady called Rosie, who's a realtor, a real estate estate agent. You've got Joshua, Monty, who helps people with their finances. And you have a lady called Lillian, who is desperate to replace her son, Joseph, who's died. All of these people are quite bad characters. And things that happen to them, I mean, uh, Rosie, she's actually putting face cream on. And all of a sudden, her face turns into massive boils and things. And worms and goodness knows what come out of her face. And she collapses. But then the next day, she wakes up and she's perfectly all right. And the same with Monty. He sees things and Joshua sees things. They're all struggling with their demons really in between the story as it moves on you've got euclid and you've got uh, karen and another young lady called angela who's a doctor and the three of them angela dr angela frank and karen and euclid are the saviors of these characters but you don't know that until the end you think and i thought that they were actually going to kill them because they had such uh, terrible experiences but but what they do is they they're watching the tv and and they get messages across the screen they get emails they get dvds sent to them and when they actually play them again or look at the screen or look at their phone or an email they've had they don't exist anymore they don't exist no they they hear music voices that aren't there yes. as well yeah and they're being tormented and the demons are building and building and and rosie she ends up with like um snakes or whatever you want to call it lizard type scales on her body you know and they are just tortured they are mentally tortured because there is no cure monty he ends up smelling the words in there are like a skunk but he is so bad and he, he washes himself with this mix of various things and it still won't go and it's just horrendous and what they've got to do really is renounce the evil and correct the balance to what they've done so euclid tries to shoot himself the gun doesn't work he tries to hang himself the root breaks breaks his leg when he falls <laughs> off the, the chair which is quite funny in the garage and he ends up in hospital being looked after by karen who's a nurse and angela who is monty's husband and she is a doctor and it's angela karen and euclid that actually help them to expunge i think is the right word their demons but 
it's a great book and you know you, you're reading it i mean had i not read the other one first i would have been completely shocked but having read the sequel i i knew that you know when people heard things ultimately it would be resolved some great parts in it i mean there's some terrible things but they just can't believe if they actually receive the email or they can hear the music <laughs> they yeah. can't sleep it's hell really yeah it's a mixed genre of suspense horror spirituality and paranormal all together isn't it actually you're right jp i mean i couldn't have put it better i mean spirituality spirituality and and the other one you mentioned yeah. uh, paranormal yes you're dead right i mean i don't know i mean I, i've met you many times and we, we know each other pretty well but i honestly think that everyone has a certain amount of spirituality within them and a sense of good and bad and good and evil and i think what monica's done in this book is she's actually gone into that and developed that to make it work in this novel but yeah i think we all have it it's whether we accept it you know we all hear voices and, and i'm not being strange but we do hear voices voices we all inner voices tell us to, to turn left or turn right mm -hmm. and you have that choice if you turn right you have an accident if you turn left you're okay but we all have choices and we are fed with and i use this advisedly we are fed with voices uh, and given instructions and some people accept them and some don't certainly in this she's right on the button the money's on the button there and, it, and it, it's great mm, i like the cover design to the book as well it's very colorful uh, it's like a whirlwind isn't it yeah it's amusing musical swirl i i think if you know when you look at certain music sounds on uh, on certain computer software you actually see the sound swirling around or you just see these volumes and frequencies opening and closing and yes i think it works very well and i'm i'm pleased that's the first one because on the second one and you highlighted it the cover is a water wheel it's obvious but with this i think karmic wheel is how you now anyone who would look at that cover take the print off you look at that picture for sort of a few minutes and and you would actually go into that picture yeah. do you know what i mean yeah i suppose with with karmic a bit of karmic will karma what goes cause round comes effect. round. Yeah, cause and effect. What goes round comes round. Karma is cause and effect. I honestly think that whatever we do in life, you and I or anyone who's listening tonight and lots of people around the world, we can control what happens next. And with every action, there is a reaction. And karma uh, is something that I'm very mindful of. How you are with people is how you actually get it back. If you're nasty to people, they will ultimately be nasty to you it's the karma right. you're creating yeah. the trouble the problems the hassles you know mm -hmm. yeah i agree well this book is suspenseful and interesting isn't it yes it is and i couldn't put it down i mean i read it virtually all this afternoon <laughs> and and it's it's nicely written i say short chapters are great you know when you're reading there's so much going on in life and if you've got six pages and the phone rings are you going to pick the book up and carry on or are you going to go back to the beginning well if you've only got a page and a half to read you can cover that very quickly can't you yes who publishes this one graham it's uh, all things that matter press i don't have a price but i would have thought being american it's probably about ten dollars i would have thought it was about seven or eight pounds uk mm -hmm. it's available on amazon uh, all things that matter press as i say it's the turn of the karmic wheel which is the prequel to the one we did last the, time the wheel's final turn i've got it up here a kindle is 665 well this is dollars by the way paperback is 1633 right so about tenner then isn't that yeah, yeah around know. about tenner yeah so that's, that's good that's the turn at the karmic wheel then by monica m brinkman i think we discussed this why why you we did? had the m before didn't we yeah <laughs> that's right the m was missing in the last one because you researched this one and you said we got an m in that and i think monica said well it's the way that the publishers did it you know there's so many mistakes in anything we do you know you read a book and they've got the name spelt wrong or what you've done or the price or whatever you know but yeah it's monica m brinkman but she's she's lovely i mean I, i've done so much with her over the last kind of couple of years she's great she's very creative which is nice you know yeah we got one for february graham yes we have i've got it here i've started to read it i've read the first chapter the lady is um a little different than myself and monica with with respect uh she sold millions of books and i mean millions not thousands millions of books so I'm going to be reading that one. I've, I've started it, but I'll be finishing that when we have a little break in January at some point. So, yeah, it's all ready to go in February, certainly. OK, then, Graham. Thanks very much, Graham. We'll speak to you next month. Thanks, JP. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.